resistance. Today, they turned up the heat with attack helicopters. Nasiriyah is a key town on the road to Baghdad, and securing it is a coalition priority. Our correspondent James Mates with the U.S. Marines sent us this eyewitness report. Early evening in Nazaria and the relative calm of the day is about to end. A single 1,000-pound laser-guided bomb delivered from a jet high above signals the start of a sustained, ferocious attack. Two U.S. Marine Cobra helicopters circle the town, preparing to take on Iraqi positions on the far bank of the Euphrates River. Their weaponry, Hellfire missiles. The results on the ground were devastating. A week now, elements of the Iraqi military and Saddam Fedayeen guerrillas have kept the Americans at bay from these positions. Now the gloves are coming off. The US military believe the civilian population has moved into the city away from these riverside positions. It is certainly true that since the air attacks have been stepped up, resistance from Nazaria has lessened significantly. Less than a mile from this battle on the American-controlled south bank of the Euphrates, the first efforts are being made to distribute humanitarian aid. This food from an Iraqi storeroom that will be given to villages nearby. Overseeing it, the Marine General commanding this sector of the front. He told me that at some stage in this battle, he had always known he'd been going to have a fight on his hands. I don't think anyone came into here thinking it was going to be a cakewalk. We, we knew that there were uh, cells like the Republican Guard. Uh, we just didn't know when uh, we'd run into them. And, and maybe in this case, we ran into them sooner than later. So how does this auger for the Battle of Baghdad? It was never our intent to go into the city here. Our intent was to uh, open the bridges and, and get a road north to ensure that the uh, forces moving towards Baghdad had supplies. We've done that. Uh, I, I think, uh, believe me, before we go into Baghdad, there'll, there'll be enough shaping and, uh, and things conducted that uh, we will try to uh, mitigate every risk to our, uh, our forces that we can before we have to go in there. That battle for Baghdad may now just be a matter of days away. Two huge armies will soon be in position to the east and the west of the city. The crucial decision now for Pentagon planners, given the level of resistance they face so far, is are those armies strong enough or must they wait longer for further reinforcements? James Mates, ITV News, Nazaria, Iraq. Royal Marine Commandos have captured several senior Iraqi officers and killed a Republican Guard colonel in fierce battles in southern Iraq. Most of the action took place uh, south of Basra. Our correspondent Bill Neely is with the commandos and sent us this report. The Royal Marines pushed forward in pitch black, their night vision equipment giving them a tactical advantage. Their target, hundreds of Iraqi troops paramilitaries who've been using the cover of darkness and a village to launch guerrilla attacks on Allied troops. On this night, the tables were turned. The Marines' attack was ferocious. A break in the firing, the Marines have broken the back of the Iraqi resistance, but they open fire again. The Marines have been exposed in this battle. There have been casualties, more than a dozen, most not serious, and no British death, in spite of the intense shooting. The Marines have taken about 200 Iraqis prisoner and killed as many as 30, some of them Saddam's elite Republican Guard. It's their most intense battle since the early days of the war and the farthest north they've come. They are now on the outskirts of Basra, Iraqi forces there, now well and truly trapped. Bill Neely, ITV News, with the Royal Marines in southern Iraq. The outlying areas around Basra look like a wasteland tonight. 
As we've seen, there's been heavy fighting there, but British forces now have the city surrounded. They've set up a roadblock on the outskirts, and as Tom Bradby reports, almost everyone has to be treated with suspicion. For one group of British soldiers in southern Iraq, this was the view today. A tiny camera recording their journey, a long plume of black smoke drifting slowly across a hostile landscape. One of their tasks, to take out transmitters. They had several goes before they were able to knock down this one. The British have Basra more or less surrounded, but that doesn't mean it's about to fall. As soldiers manned this checkpoint, they came under attack. Right, everybody get back in the wagon now. Civilians who'd emerged from the city in search of food and supplies sheltered from incoming fire. The main problem now is getting the civilians to push back. So when the explosions go off, we don't get like any civilian casualties, which would be uh, catastrophic. Reports from inside Basra say Saddam loyalists are still firmly in control and British soldiers manning these checkpoints were on high alert. Anyone armed or arousing their suspicions was taken to one side, hooded and then removed for further questioning. It is clear tonight that British forces are stepping up the pressure here. Tom Bradby, ITV News. In the last few minutes, the Ministry of Defence has announced that a British soldier was killed in action in southern Iraq today. Several others were injured in what is believed to have been an ambush on a Royal Marines river patrol on the Al Faw Peninsula. The American Defence Secretary Donald Rumsfeld has denied that there is a pause in the war to await, to await much-needed reinforcements. The man who is effectively running the war, General Tommy Franks, was asked today if he thought it would go into the summer. He didn't deny it. One never knows how long a war will take. We don't know. Um, but what we do know is that this coalition sees this regime gone at the end of that uh, war. The bombing raids in Baghdad are intensifying tonight. There have been huge explosions around the clock aimed mainly, say the Americans, at Iraqi defense positions. Our correspondent John Irvine is in Baghdad. This is a formidable sight. You could be forgiven for thinking it's dawn breaking over Baghdad, but it isn't. These are massive incendiary bombs exploding on the outskirts of the city. The Americans have hit a presidential palace, a paramilitary training base, and some surface-to-air missile sites. They've also inflicted more damage on Iraq's telecommunications network. More telephone lines are down, but Iraqi television continues to broadcast, and these were among the images transmitted today. They apparently show an American tank and bulldozer, which the Iraqis claim were captured by local tribesmen near the town of Najaf. Among the items filmed were what appeared to be personal letters and Bibles. The Iraqis also claim to have brought down more Apache helicopter gunships. Fighters of the Iraqi tribes there, with other fighters of our people, they shoot it down an Apache helicopter. The ground advance may be on hold, but the coalition still enjoys absolute air supremacy. It's an advantage they're sure to press home in the coming days and weeks. John Irvine, ITV News, Baghdad. We're sad to report tonight the death of our colleague Gabby Rado, the highly respected correspondent for Channel 4 News who was working in northern Iraq. Gabby died in an isolated incident not related to the war. He appears to have fallen off a hotel roof early today. He was given first aid, but he died later in hospital. There's still no firm news about two members of an ITN crew who are missing in Iraq. ITV News cameraman Fred Nerak and translator Hossein Osman came under American gunfire outside Basra, an attack in which our correspondent Terry Lloyd was killed. And that's it so far this evening. We'll have the latest on the death of the British soldier killed in action at 10.45 tonight. Until then, from our teams in Iraq and Kuwait, goodbye.